Hi guys, I'm Paul Pluta and welcome to the Archie Luxury Corporate Channel. Today we're going to discuss the very, very important topic of how to finance your Rolex purchase. How to finance your Rolex purchase. Let's run the intro and let's discuss. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Paul Pluta and welcome to the Archie Luxury Corporate Channel. Today I'm going to discuss what is the best way to finance a Rolex wristwatch purchase. And I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you, if you are a smart investor in wristwatches, you can basically have your wristwatch for free. A free wristwatch? What am I talking about? Well, let me explain. If you buy a nice example of a Rolex watch on the used, the secondary market, if you buy certain models from a second-hand dealer, you may be able to have that watch for free. Let me explain. Rolex watches, certain models, go up in value. Now, you've got to be careful which model you pick. If you pick a gold model, like a Day Date or a Datejust, or even a Submarina, you could run into trouble. However, number one, the tip is to pick the right model and the best Rolexes to buy, the best Rolexes to buy, Rolex Steel Sports, Rolex Steel Sports. And let me explain further. You buy a used Rolex Steel Sports watch, you buy it on the used market, secondary market, and the watch itself always holds its own. That's correct. Basically, the buy price minus the eventual sell price means you could be thousands of dollars in front. Now, you may look at this equation and say, well, that's probably very true if you have bought watches 10, 20, 30 years ago, but what about in recent times? Well, what about recent times? I acquired, this is the least, this was the least desired model in the Rolex Sport Steel range, the Rolex Explorer 2. I bought this watch here about two years ago from a dealer for 5,000 Australian dollars. Five thousand Australian dollars. Now, this particular wristwatch itself, I went overseas. I had a, I was able to claim the GST back. Now, when I did that, I had to leave that watch overseas for a period of at least 12 months. No problems. I'm a multi-watch collector. That isn't a problem. So the purchase price of this watch was 5000 minus the GST, 4500 Australian dollars. Okay, this watch here today, uh, this is a boxed example with no papers. It's an F serial number from about 2004. So when I acquired it, it was at least 10 years old. And... It cost me four and a half after tax back. Now, this type of watch in the Australian market for a nice, sharp, no holes case, solid end link Explorer 2 is going for about six and a half to seven thousand dollars. Which means if I liquidated this watch, 
I've made a handsome profit. Now, I'm not doing watches to buy and sell. I'm not a flipper. I want the enjoyment of ownership. And in this particular case here, this watch here, if I sell this watch, it would have cost me nothing. In fact, I would have made money. That's right. Picking the right piece can, in fact, make money for you. Now, if you said, well, hang on a minute there, Archie. What about if we factored in a service? Okay, even with a service, a service would cost approximately 500 Aussie dollars for a reputable third party or $1,000 Australian for Rolex factory service. I would still be thousands in front, a thousand in front. So I got to tell you guys, this is the thing. You've got to pick the right models. Rolex Steel Sports, that is the best model to pick. Okay, we're discussing the Rolex, Rolex making money from Rolex as well. I don't believe it's a, it's a pump and dump situation to flip. I do this for the enjoyment. Now, we want to talk about how do we finance a wristwatch, a luxury wristwatch? How do we finance such, such a delightful creature? That, my friend, is the question. Now, I would highly recommend the best way to finance these watches here would be to save and pay, pay for the piece with cash. However, however, modern living is what it is, doesn't always allow us to enter the equation like that. So my advice is to use the thirds. Basically, we put in one third cash. We put in one third from selling some less desirable pieces. You may have some old tag Hoyas, you may have some uh, pieces that you no longer desire or lust for. Put that money into a solid Rolex Steel Sports investment. Now, the best way I advise people to do this is third, third, third. Third of the money comes from your own savings. Another third comes from selling unwanted goods you may have, like a less desirable brands. Brands you know have very little chance of moving forward. And I would recommend borrowing a third, that's correct, borrowing a third to finance this deal. Now, what would I recommend? How do you finance it? And there's a number of ways you could do this. Um, you could, you could, number of things are, number one is a credit card, a credit card. This can be a very useful tool to buy some luxury goods, which will increase in value. The other option is to use a bit of equity in your home. You may have a home loan redraw facility. You may have some sort of overdraft which allows you to uh, purchase goods with equity and other assets. Now, I got to tell you, my honest opinion is the best way to finance luxury wristwatches is to use a credit card. Now, credit card, MasterCard, Visa, these are the best ways to go. I would highly say to you, American Express is one of the least attractive cards in the market. There's two types of American Express. There is the charge card, which basically means you need to clear the bill every month. So technically, you don't have a balance. You clear your bill every month. That is probably the least a uh, desirable way to do it because the whole point of putting it on the card is you don't have the money. 
So it's much better to use a revolving source of finance. American Express does have credit cards, but I've got to be honest with you, when you pay by the American Express card, most merchants charge you more than if you used a Visa or a MasterCard. So the American Express card, cut that bastard up. That's the best advice I can give you. If you have an American Express card, cut that bastard up and send get a Visa or a MasterCard. That is the honest advice from the pontiff. The next way we could do it is we could use some equity in our in our home. So this is a redraw facility. We could uh, tap into a line of credit. The only danger is if one is not careful, yes, interest rates on a home loan typically are around the three and a half to four and a half percent. Yes, this is the Australian market I'm talking about. Uh, however, if you're not careful, you could be paying off that wristwatch over 30 years, 25 or 30 years, depending on the term of your mortgage. Unless uh, you are a mathematic mathematics person who works out, hey, I'm owing this balance because I took a, a chunk of money out to buy a Rolex, Rolex, unless you're smart enough to factor that into your repayments and pay extra to pay the watch off, you could be financing that over 30 years, which would be a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to do. The other option is, is if you have a paid off vehicle, you have your car that's paid off, I would recommend refinancing the car taking the money out of the car and buying the luxury watch. I did do this many years ago. I had a paid off Honda Accord and I decided I wanted to get a Patek Philippe. It wasn't a Rolex, it was a Patek Philippe annual calendar. So I borrowed, I borrowed $20,000 against my paid off car. Now, that was all good and proper. The only problem is, my wife at the time wrote off the car and I actually had to buy a new vehicle and I was, when I was given a check by the insurance company, it did not clear the loan. I was upside down because I'd used that money to buy the paddock. And then not only did I have to cover the shortfall with the finance company, but I had to also buy a new vehicle. So you've got to be careful if you do that. Sometimes it can come and bite you in the ass. It can come and bite you in the ass. So that is a very, very dangerous thing. The other dangerous thing is if you take money out of your home loan, your mortgage, or an overdraft, guess what? Erin Dawes may be asking questions. Why have you taken $5,000 out of our mortgage? What exactly are you doing, Charlie? That's the type of discussion it could evolve. A good friend of mine decided to take a little bit of money out of a joint savings account. Guess what? The bank, when he withdrew the money, he thought, oh, I'll just keep take it out for a couple of months. She won't know. There was an email sent, a text, an SMS, and an email sent to both parties saying, just confirming you've taken $5,000 out. It didn't go over well. Generally speaking, when you are financing wristwatches, you are best to keep the little lady out of the discussions. The lady of the house, she who must be obeyed, often does not understand sexy financing deals 
involving luxury wrist watches. So be very careful. The best advice is keep her out of luxury wrist watch purchases. Keep her out of the discussion because she may not understand the hobby. She may not understand the weases. You need a balanced collection and Rolex. You can't lose money buying Rolex. You can't lose money. She may not quite understand the situation. So I got to be honest with you. The best thing is keep her out of discussions. So that's the key point. I want to make it with you. Probably best keep her out of it. She probably won't understand when you've got three or four luxury timepieces already and you're buying the next one. She may not be so eager to sign the forms. So just be aware of that. Okay, let's talk about credit cards and how to finance. Okay, the best way to get a luxury wristwatch is to apply for a credit card in your name. If you've got reasonable credit, and if you've got a job and a couple of pay slips, it's all very good there. I would highly recommend, you may not need to be, uh, this, is, this advice is strictly for entertainment purposes. You may not need to be, uh, you could be a little bit on the positive side as far as income estimates go because usually when they check they do a credit check on you they check out uh how much you owe and a few little things like that and generally speaking they don't need normally need to ring your boss or payroll and you, you could always just say you made a slight mistake so I would highly recommend applying for a credit card in your name. A good bit of advice is instead of getting the statements going to home where the walls have ears and, and eyes, you could get the statement sent to your work address. Therefore, she doesn't need to worry herself with them. Uh, high, great idea. Get the statement sent to work. And basically... <clears throat> What I would suggest for you to do is <laughs> is to get a couple of credit cards, and we can send up we can set up a system for this. Now, the best thing to do is to purchase this on one credit card. Now, if you're unable to get credit card, um, if he's buying the watch from a merchant who doesn't accept credit cards, he may accept PayPal. So PayPal allows you to pay for a transaction with a merchant who may not accept credit cards and he takes PayPal, you could use your credit card to pay him. The next thing you should do is, once you've put on a big chunk of consumer debt, you could very easily, we'll take this example of a, uh, a Rolex Explorer 2. So th these are about, this would be about six and a half thousand Australian dollars. Okay, so we've applied for a credit card. We've got six and a half thousand dollars now what i would do is the best way to finance this is i would say okay we've got we're using the third 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 rule so what i would say is we're going to finance two two thousand we're going to put in and two thousand we're going to sell some other garbage that we've got my best advice is put get the six get the six first we can always pay the credit card down after we've got the wristwatch I would, my best advice to you would be to finance the whole $6,000. So say this is, let's just for, for, for convenience sake, we'll say $6,000 Aussie dollars. We finance the whole lot. And what we do is we put it on a credit card. And then we, this is where we're going to be smart. We then flip that balance to a low rate offer. Now listen to this. There are transfer with 0% finance for up to 24 months. So we've made the purchase on one credit card. Then we transfer that to another credit card, which may have a lower low rate or 0% 
deal. Now, you've got to read the terms and conditions. So many people, the devil is in the detail. My best advice to you is to put this big consumer debt from one card, transfer it to a new card. You've got the best advice I can give you from Papa Pluto is to immediately, that card, what happens is it may be 0% interest until you've paid it down to zero for, say, two-year period. But if you made new purchases on that card, like, say, we went and had coffee at Starbucks one day, guess what? That $5 coffee will be charged at a much higher interest rate. It could be charged at, say, 24.99%. And it doesn't matter how much money we pay off, pay off, pay off, it doesn't start, it starts, any money we put in pays off the 0% finance first and the 24.99%, it just starts growing, growing like a fungus. So the best advice is when you've transferred over, read the terms and condition, see how it works. Then get that credit card and put it away. Put it in to, if you're a true man, you'd have a lockable briefcase where Erin Dawes ain't going to see the statements, ain't going to see the credit card. Put it in there and do not use it because if you use that card, you may be incurring extra purchases at very high interest rates. You've also got to time the cycle. Time the cycle. You wouldn't tell your wife Hey, honey, I want to buy a Maserati at the wrong time of month. You got to time it. You got to say to her, honey, I'd really like to get a sports Gran Turismo. You got to time it. You wouldn't, there's certain days of the month which aren't very good to approach her about this idea. And there's other days of the month where anything is cool. So you got to time it. Credit card cycles are the same sometimes. If you get it at the beginning of the cycle, it'll be in next month. If you get it at the end of the old cycle, you're paying next week. So you've got to be very careful. Timing, fuckers, timing. Generally speaking, on new watches, you can get something called dealer financing. This is where the dealer will allow you to take the watch home and they have a credit facility. Now, the only thing is... They generally only offer the credit facility on hard-to-move stock. Hard-to-move fuckeroonies. So, <clears throat> generally, if you wanted to use the dealer financing on a Steel Sports Stunner, Rolex, Rolex, Steel Sports Stunner, no, 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 you can't do that. So, <clears throat> my advice is generally <laughs> the best way to pay for it, the best way to finance a Rolex is to use a credit card and then roll it over to a interest fee period. Now, the next question is, okay, so what happens here? I thought, Archie, you've just bought a $6,000 watch. You put the whole amount onto an interest fee period for two years. What do you mean, Archie? What's going to happen? I thought you said put third deposit, a third from selling stuff, and a third on credit. Well, what we do is, because we've got 0% finance, we can put that $2,000 into a sub-account, a no-fee sub-account with, uh, okay, it's going to be shitty interest, but we'll just put it away for emergencies. When I say emergencies, if another watch comes up, we could dip in. We could dip in if we were had a bargain that came up. So this is how you do it. This is how you do it indeed. So, in my opinion, the best way to finance wristwatch purchases is on a credit card. Then transfer it to a uh, another credit card with a zero a transfer offer, and do not use that card. Just put that card away in your lockable briefcase, and then <clears throat> what you do is you have some reserve money you put into the sub account, and that also can be very handy. Er indoors. Um, don't ever talk about money with her. This is secret men's money, okay? Secret men's money. Don't don't talk about money with her. This is this is this is money in case a really good buy comes up. So that I think is the best way to finance wristwatches. It is to the best way to finance it is to put it on a credit card, then transfer it to an offer, and then 
Have money in the, in, a, in a, up your sleeve. Have access to cash up your sleeve. Because if you buy the Explorer 2, you might have a sub. No date comes up at a bargain price. Perfect combo. Combo. Perfect pair. Perfect pair. So this is how we do it. This is the best way to finance a Rolex watch. Now, let me just say this to you, okay? You be sensible. You be clean. You be mean. You can build a wonderful fighting machine Rolex collection. And that leads us to the last topic, which is the, the fact that with ownership of Rolex watches, these are off ledger. If you're going through a divorce, if you need to leave the country or leave the state very, very quickly, take your watches and fuck off. There ain't no title. There ain't no lean on this sort of shit. Wristwatches are lean proof <laughs> because it's possession is ownership on these things. So I would highly recommend these are things, these are assets. These are assets which do not, they're not, you can't put a lien on it, can't put a mortgage on it, you can't sell the paper. This watch itself here is a very, very important investment class. It's it's hag free. Your ex-wife cannot get onto them. The IRS cannot get onto them if they don't. What they don't know about won't hurt them. And wristwatches themselves. This is a portable asset class which you can use for future endeavors. Like if you need to leave the country quickly, you could. You could wristwatches, man. That's where it's at. So my advice to you. Finance them on a credit card, then transfer to an interest-free period. Make sure you do not, you read the terms and conditions, you understand. Have that money. Okay, may not pay the money off, but you've got that money up your sleeve. Because we want to become watch traders. We want to become mini dealers. Mini dealers. This is what we do. We can hide the collection from her indoors. We just say, we're mini dealers, honey. We're mini dealers, and this is the way it works. This is the best way to finance. I have done this for years. I've been in the watch business, the game. I've been using borrowed money since the 90s. Since the 90s. In fact, I'm still paying off the Explorer. I'm joking. Of course I'm not. Sexy investment options. Sexy, sexy financing. My advice to you. Put it on a credit card, Visa, MasterCard, forget Amex. Amex is just an awful, horrible, American depressed, forget that, American Express garbage. Visa, MasterCard, transfer it to a low rate offer. And then I'm telling you now, I am telling you once and for all, with your credit cards themselves there, transfer it. And you too can have watches for free. I'm Archie Luxury. I hope you've enjoyed this series on how to finance the best way to finance your Rolex watch purchase. I hope this is useful. Please like, subscribe, tell your corporate friends. And guys, don't forget, don't forget, who has the most watches wins. I'm Paul Pluter. This is the Archie Luxury Corporate Channel. Subscribe. Like and tell your corporate friends.